How you doing? This is the Radio Guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you so much for your continued support. As we continue on with Hampton Speaks Part 2, we'll continue our conversation with Senior Vice President Attorney Paul C. Harris. Again, you can follow us on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. And don't forget the website, obnradio.com. Let us now continue on with our conversation of Part 2. Hampton speaks. And I, I, I know that you have the Big South. They're waiting. They say, hey, welcome, Hampton. And um, and this part of the undercurrent would be that Presbyterian has uh, just officially dropped their football program. Could, yeah. it, could it be that it's some added, um, um, I guess, pressure would be the proper word to hurry up and square up whatever you need to square up with the MEAC so you can kind of feel that gap? Uh, for the Big South now that you'll be a part of? Well, we've, we've known about Presbyterian, and that's not a surprise to us. Um, our uh, collaboration and communications with the Big South is, has been uh, very good throughout all of this, and they remain excited and uh, supportive. Um, but they have, frankly, a, maybe a slightly different perspective on this than, than, than we have. Um, because Hampton is an HBCU. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we're an HBCU. We're even proud of the fact that we're one of the best uh, HBCUs in the country and one of the best modest-sized institutions, black or white, uh, in the country. So even as we prepare to join the Big South, every single one of us here at Hampton, from the president to myself to the AD on down, uh, is mindful of the values and beliefs that we share with MEAC member institutions and HBCUs generally. And um, we will always be bound by our unique educational missions and treasured athletic uh, traditions. And uh, we find it disappointing that the MEAC has been unwilling to sit down to talk with us about how we might preserve it and to, to do so in a way that... Uh, uh, in a venue uh, to resolve our differences outside of the public's eye. That's been our aim all along, but again, we've not had a, uh, a dance partner. Yeah, and, I, and that's unfortunate. I am a graduate of Prairie View A&M University. I share that, that heritage uh, and the love for the HBCUs as well, and it, it struck me as odd uh, indifferent. And then if you allow me to even get as trivial, I said, man, of all the months this came out, couldn't y'all wait a couple more weeks until after Black History Month was over with before we could we could have that implode like it did. But it, it, it is what it is. And things will will have to move forward in a positive light. I have one more question for you, um, uh, Mr. Harris. And, and when you say when you're going over these bylaws and everything, how difficult and challenging it was. When you first started making the move, could you all see this coming down the road when you got a chance to start looking at the constitutions and and what it would take to exit out? And could this have been prevented? Oh, it certainly could have been prevented. Um, a, a part of governance uh, is the regular review of your governing documents. So, uh, you know, that is the responsibility of the MEAC uh, office. That's why we have a commissioner. Uh, to coordinate uh, these things and to ensure that our Constitution and bylaws are kept up to date. So uh, a couple of examples would help make the point. Um, when uh, Maryland left the ACC to join the Big 12, um, there was an issue that was ultimately taken to court over the ACC's bylaws, which called for uh, an exit fee for Maryland uh, to pay. But that exit fee provision was in the ACC Constitution and Bylaws because the members of the uh, ACC at the behest of the commissioner got together and decided to put it in there. Um, the Colonial Athletic Association has an exit fee provision that wasn't in there before. Uh, the commissioner got the institutions in together to discuss it and decided to put it in the uh, Constitution and Bylaws. Um, unfortunately, the MEAC has just been asleep at the wheel uh, and, uh, and, and has not 
given its constitution and bylaws, the kind of regular and thorough review that it deserves to avoid these kinds of matters. Uh, and so when you don't do that, um, the, the result is, is usually not a good one. And unfortunately, I think we're both having to uh, come to realize that in perhaps the most unfortunate kind of way. Uh, and now we're, at least on our part at Hampton, trying to figure out how we can resolve this uh, in a way that both sides' needs are met. Yeah, and, and I'm really praying that it does come to a head extremely, extremely soon because um, it's, it's a black eye for, for all of us. And from my vantage point, it's a black eye for all of us. And it's not healthy, uh, especially in the state that we are in. And we're in the 21st century. And um, we are a, a unique body of people uh, with unique culture and values. And when all else fails, we ought to be able to sit down. Uh, I guess maybe we need to get back to the old fashioned days. Just go get a, a, a turkey sandwich and a, and a Coke or a Pepsi, uh, sit down and just talk this thing out. And we'll agree to disagree on certain things and just have a, a clean break because who knows, there could be a time where both parties come together again to re to reunite what has been interrupted after 22 years of um uh, I would hope to say um, joy and entertainment on both sides. Well, you have just articulated Hampton's position very well. That, that's our position. Our position is we, we, we really don't understand why we can't sit down and discuss these things. But, you know, you're hired to the extent that you have um, any ire at all ought to be aimed at the leaders of the MEAC institutions who have steadfastly refused to have a conversation with another MEAC institution on how to move forward to resolve this dispute. Uh, that is really what is unfortunate here because we're talking about the leaders of some of our most prized HBCUs, Howard, North Carolina A&T, Norfolk State, you know, Bethune-Cookman, FAMU, uh, all of these leaders um, have decided for themselves, Hampton has been the only one of the 13 members of the MEA to agree that sitting down and having a conversation about how to move forward is probably the best route to resolving uh, this matter. All the other 12 have decided otherwise. So to the extent that you have angst and anger or um, frustration certainly should not be misdirected at Hampton. It should be directed at the other 12 leaders of the uh, MEAC because if they called me this afternoon or tomorrow morning and said, we, let's sit down and talk, we'd be at the table, and I am convinced that within a few hours we could get this uh, uh, behind us, but uh, that isn't the case. I often use the example of... Um, Harkening back to the 1980s, I believe 1986 to be exact, uh, when uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan um, met in Reykjavik, Iceland, to talk about how each country could reduce its nuclear weapons arsenals. Now think about that. Here you have the Soviet Union at the time and the United States armed to the teeth with nuclear weapons with the ability to destroy not only each other, but the entire world. And major and significant differences between the two countries. And yet, yet, the leaders of both countries could find a way to sit down and talk about the problems between us. And here we are talking about withdrawing from an athletic conference. And 12 leaders of our most prominent HBCUs cannot find their way to sit down with a fellow member with whom they'd had a 22-year relationship to talk about how we could amicably reach a withdrawal agreement that meets the needs and desires of both parties. I think that's a sad commentary on leadership. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a sad, and, and, and by no means, I'm not angry. 
um, I'm, I'm frustrated would be a frustration would be a good word to use and embarrassed um, in, in, in layman terms in all fairness this is equivalent from my vantage point to black on black crime another drive by shoot another gang shooting but it's done behind pride of education and, and legalism and things of that nature when all eyes are on us as a whole you know, at, at such a time as this, we should all be able to say, OK, here's what we're going to do. Here's how it's going to get done. We're going to come out here and we're going to we're going to be one voice, even if we agree to disagree. I've, I serve on boards of, of all magnitudes and there are times it gets heated in those closed sessions. But when we come out, it's time to, to nip this in the bud and let everybody move forward. And I'm really hoping that we can come to a conclusion on that real soon. I, I could not agree with you more. Um, I, I'm frankly disappointed myself, not, not as an administrator at Hampton University. I'm disappointed from the perspective of being an African-American Ameri male. I'm disappointed from the perspective of being a proud alumnus of an HBCU. I'm a Hampton graduate myself. Um, and I guess the expectations that I have of HBCU leaders um, has, has been, you know, shattered a little bit as a result of this. And that, that does sadden me um, because I agree with you, the, the, the inability or the unwillingness to come together and have a civil discussion uh, and to have this play out in the public as it, it now is feeds into the most pernicious stereotypes about um, black people. Uh, and I think we have to be, as leaders, keen to avoid falling into those kinds of traps uh, whenever possible. You know, I enjoy the friendly bets and tailgate fun with my friends from Norfolk State and Howard and Morgan State and Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, my closest law school classmate is a proud Morgan State alum. One of my closest Army officer buddies is a Howard alum. Both of my wife's parents graduated from North Carolina A&T. Uh, Central has produced a number of colleagues in the law. One of my best friends from grade school, who now travels the world as a businessman, is a graduate of uh, FAMU. Um, and I, I know I don't need to tell you how unique and special these relationships are. Um, you know, we all have similar stories to tell, and I think that's part of what makes this ordeal uh, a tragedy uh, because it's completely avoidable. It's quite avoidable, and, and that's why uh, my thoughts and prayers are with all parties involved. Um, we take honor and pride and focusing on HBCU athletics because we've had to be creative. We've had to be unique with getting our story out. And a, a lot of times uh, when it does come out like this, you know, I don't want people choosing sides. I want us to come to a reasoning where we can all walk away and still be brothers and sisters when the dust settles. And right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. And, and I, I want to first say thank you for allowing uh, yourself this time and availing yourself to us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network and the Mike Prince Show. Uh, we have a custom where we allow our guests to have closing thoughts and comments before we close this segment out. And the floor is now yours, sir. Dr. Prince, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me this opportunity to ex explain that I hope uh, fairly and as impartially as I could um, where we are in Hampton's withdrawal from the, the MEAC. Um, I just want to reiterate that um, it is our solemn desire to find an amicable way to resolve our problems and to continue the rich and fruitful uh, relationships that we have with our HBCU uh, brethren and our MEAC uh, member institutions and colleagues in particular. Uh, I really hope that this will come to a conclusion uh, soon. 
uh, HBUs across HBCUs across the country today face myriad uh, challenges, um, and it's more important for all of us now, perhaps more so than at any point uh, in our history, to collaborate where we can to ensure that our bonds of friendship remain strong, to share knowledge and information where we can, and to um, celebrate each other's achievements. And that's something I think we do not do a good job of, not only at the HBCU and higher education level, um, but um, on an individual basis. And that is something that I try to drive home with our freshmen male students here at Hampton, uh, and that is learn to celebrate the achievements of your friends. Don't be jealous. Celebrate their achievements. Be happy for them. And I think uh, that lesson is, is something that um, would benefit all of us at this particular moment and in this particular matter. We would hope that others would celebrate our success as an institution, and we would hope that in our rise, we could help to bring other uh, institutions along with us through fruitful and productive collaborations. Well, sir, we hope to be able to continue, uh, I guess, the part two of this with a happy ending where everybody um, goes on the merry way and Hampton goes on to have success in the Big South. The MEAC will pick up whatever pieces need to be picked up from their behalf and everyone could walk along in a harmonious note. In the infamous words of Hosea said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, just reasoning come together. I believe it's something that can be worked out. We want to thank you so much, Mr. Paul C. Harris, Senior Vice President of Hampton University. I am the Radio Guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Remember that you can follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. And don't forget, we're on tune in 24 hours a day at Open Mic Broadcast Network. If you're in the Prairie View area, 87.9 FM. And don't forget, if you're anywhere in the country and you don't have access by listening either other way, all you have to do is dial 605-477-5066 and never miss what's going on at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.